on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the fourth generation Mercedes GLE long wheelbase code name V167. This is the sole petrol engine option available with the GLE currently, the GLE 450 and straight away let's open the engine bay because nobody's actually cleaned the engine bay. I have to do it right now. Oh my god, it's super hot freak. Says six cylinder right there. Engine bay doesn't seem to have any space whatsoever, but they are obviously going to fit a V8 right here for the GLE 63 AMG, the best version of the GLE, but very expensive as well. Washer fluid goes in right there, insulation of course, and let's just shut this. Now it is a facelift, but very few changes have been done. The 450s, the 450D, as well as the 450 petrol, they are available in AMG line trim, so sportier bumpers. The grille has only one horizontal slat. The other version, which is the GLE 300D, comes in a lower variant. I think it's a professional line or whatever. That one has dual slats on the grille and not as sporty bumpers. Mercedes logo is humongous. The radar is actually fitted right behind. There's a camera here. See so many tri arrow patterns of stars on the grille, which looks quite nice. Another Mercedes logo. I don't know why Mercedes does two logos. It has got front parking sensors, six of them right there. Chrome treatment here on the bumper, and this one is very much functional. Yeah, air curtains right there. The lights are beautiful. They are very nice, and they. Also do this dance when you turn on the light at night, so you can see the lights move. Actually, these are multi-beam LED headlights. Says Mercedes-Benz here. This is the DRL. Earlier, this car had uh, two DRL lines to signify that this is the E-Class of SUVs. I mean, the GLE is obviously the E-Class of SUVs. So the C-Class had one, the E-Class had two, and the S-Class had three. They have gone away from it. Now it just gets a single line right here. So that's a change which has been done. So Mercedes is very confused with what they are doing in terms of you know thinking that now two lines means the E-Class, but they have gone away from that as well. And obviously the indicator doubles up right there because this is the DRL. So multi-function there. If you notice, it has these sort of eyebrows as well. Now the GLE obviously is a big car. This being the long wheelbase is around, not around. It's actually more than five meters in terms of length. The wheelbase is more than three meters, and it obviously has the iconic ML silhouette over there. That's something which the ML started way back in 1997. Looks really nice. Now it is on the off-road height setting. That's the reason it is quite raised. It has Mercedes-Benz written on the brake calipers. Tire size 275.50. 20, so AMG line gets 20 inches, and the lower variant obviously gets 19 inches. There you can see the suspension. In fact, because the tires are jutting out so much now, I think they've given this sort of a flare right here. This is a footboard which actually illuminates at night. Yeah, the light comes out from there, and it also projects the Mercedes logo from there. So it gets a 360 degree parking camera. It says Mercedes Benz here. Carl Benz's signature is there. There's obviously a lot of sensors, basically cameras for ADAS functions like lane keep assist and all. Request sensors are there on all the doors. So these are chrome. Chrome finishing actually looks quite nice, and I quite like it. In fact, if I press a button here, okay, I press the button there. There, the seat is going to move ahead. It's a bit slow, but it gets the job done. So look at this. Go all the way up. The problem is that if you want to put it ahead, you can do this. But if you want to put it back now, you have to keep the button pressed. I don't know what's the use of this, but still, just to increase the boot carrying capacity, probably you can do that now. No, it's not happening. If you notice, the front seat is also moving right now. So when you put the seat ahead, the driver has to go and sit on the hood of the vehicle, I believe. So controls are here, so you can move the seat from here as well. There, I'm moving it ahead. You can move it behind. Space-wise, it's fantastic. This Mercedes-Benz glows. Yeah, it illuminates. That's also quite good. No soft close door function. Fuel actually goes in right here, and I love the way the car is so. Sexy and stays true to the original. Yes, this design will remind you of the original as well. It is unmistakably an ML. Sorry, special GLE. Bolo, galat mat bola karo. Says formatic here. Some revisions to the tail lights. Mercedes-Benz logo on the inside as well. And this is the rear fog light. Meanwhile, formatic for four-wheel drive. Obviously, GLE 450. It will have a D if it's a diesel. Rear wiper washer and all that is obviously given. But there's no camera at the rear. I'm just kidding. It actually pops out from there. That's quite nice. Facial cans fingers of truth. Disappointed with this fake stuff happening here. Why are there fake exhausts in this car? I don't know. But the real exhaust is here and here. Yeah, it gets dual exhaust, of course. Six sensors at the rear. Six parking sensors because it's got 360 degree parking camera and 360 degree parking sensors. Facial cans fingers of truth. Always upset with the fact that this is fake. There's no need to do it, Mercedes. I don't know why they still continue to do it. Let's open this. By the way, I mounted stop lamp, sort of for rear spoiler. The boot is massive at 630 liters. Let me put. I mean, let me just remove the parcel shelf. Look at that. That's huge. That's what she said. 
storage space here there's a spare wheel which is not an alloy it is 195 70 20 in terms of size really small warning triangle first aid kit all that has been given in order to recline the seat it's very easy all i need to do is press a button here okay there and if you notice the front seat is moving driver seat that is then it's moving the headrest and then now it's reclined so in order to increase the boot carrying capacity you can do that as well yeah buttons have been placed here i just have to press it once it all happens automatically now obviously the ride height has been raised so it becomes a little inconvenient so you can actually decrease the ride height by pressing a button yeah there you see it is going down so it just makes it easier to load in luggage because obviously air suspension for the win it's only going to work at the rear air suspension because that's where you need to do all this yeah it's going down it's going down there it is so now i think it's slightly easier to put in luggage let's press this power tailgate of course coming to the other side now you'll notice that the car is squatted down from the rear and from the front it is not so squatted down but it looks really very good in fact i really like the ml sorry why I keep saying ml i really like the gle only in 50 sorry 63 guys says amg on the wheels these are amg wheels of course look really premium with the amg line kit it gets a sun blind at the rear so here it's all electric which is quite nice and lot of controls in fact i can open the sun blind by pressing a button here i can control both the power windows and both the sun shades at the rear by just pressing a button and the seat also gets a recline angle so it's upright at the moment so i can just press this and recline it completely recline angle is very impressive it doesn't move too much as such but yes it gets the job done seats are nice and comfortable isofix child seat mounts but here you don't get anything no wireless charger nothing of that sort some storage space here in fact it gets two usb-c charging sockets as well so mercedes has put a lot of usb-c charging sockets in this car you can't move the seat from behind but there's good amount of space yeah there's good amount of leg room and knee room in fact headroom is also quite impressive ac vents here ac vents here and height adjustable seat belts at the front let me shut the door it feels very solid and very spacious here but because it curves from right here there's not much space for the rear seat passenger also because of the fact that here you have got this jutting out for the climate control air conditioning four zone climate control air conditioning system works fantastically well there's something here yeah there is i mean there are two usb-c charging sockets some storage space here so two here two here two at the front three at the front actually three how many yeah this car has got like seven eight usb-c charging sockets dashboard design looks more or less the same as before which is very nice and similar to the gls so they should have differentiated it made the gls more premium of course and i can just move it ahead and behind like this that's easy hook handle to hold on to a microphone and this is super duper soft so your head actually sinks in right here beautiful headdress yeah really very impressive i don't know what this red thing is for but i think with this oh my god this seat is going ahead it should probably recline the seat but you need two hands to do all that you can't do it single-handedly that's what i believe getting in and out is not a problem at all let's just shut there the door did not really shut so you have to put in some effort at times and what i was miffled with the gle when i drove it earlier this particular generation model was it lacked quite a lot of features but now mercedes-benz has tried to give it a lot more features but also increase the prices unrealistically yeah this costs quite a lot let's get inside it says airbag here because it's got a knee airbag seat heating and ventilation has been added now finally and i can actually operate the co-driver seat from here which is also a cool thing which is there in a lot of mercedes cars so there's nothing new about it yeah that's kind of mainstream now and let me adjust the seat i press a button and you will notice that the steering is going inside it's moving upwards the seats under thigh support is opening so under thigh support is never an issue seat is going back in fact the seats are really very nice and comfortable adjustable in a multitude of ways you get a big fat brake pedal and on the inside nothing much has changed only thing they have added more features so this is very nice which they've added they've also added a heads up display which shows you quite a lot of information there there's a tachometer which is cool enough of course the steering wheel is also new yeah this is a new steering wheel which comes from the s class it has this touch controls which i honestly don't like they're not that easy and good to use thankfully they're not given us touch controls for the seat adjustment because that's not very nice fingerprint magnet of course and glove box is decent size but now you get the air balance package yes inbuilt car perfume is here lot of compartments which have been given inside some storage space here there's a usb-c charging socket and this is for the height adjust with the s suspension 
null finishing very premium controls look at the control these are obviously for the air conditioning it gets a four zone climate control air conditioning system there's a touch pad lot of physical buttons here this is for the drive mode this is for the camera this is a shortcut to get into the car setting this is for audio telephone navigation and map volume i really like this i'm happy they have not gone for the full touch screen yet which they will obviously go for because this is a older system 12.3 inch screen 12.3 inch screen what is new software update now it gets wireless apple carplay and android auto connectivity and it gets 3d maps navigation is actually phenomenal look at the quality of the maps absolutely amazing and this screen is very responsive very easy to use in fact i'm going to get into the comfort mode right now because it has got ambient lighting and obviously it's got 64 colors for the ambient lighting these are multi colors and then i can choose from here also the colors phenomenal ambient lighting in all mercedes cars very impressive seat kinetics it doesn't get proper massage function energizing comfort is there so the usual stuff which you get in a lot of mercedes cars but it also gets an off road mode which will tell you a lot of information like what is the condition of the suspension at the moment tire temperature and what is your angle and all and then you can turn on traction control get into manual mode downhill assist you can turn on you can turn on the camera as well this is the transparent bonnet which is something we have seen in the glc already so all this has been added in this car as well let me get into settings here i can go through a lot of stuff but i think this is the best thing i press this button i get into the main settings here i can just press this button to lower the car i can get the car into car wash mode why is it not lowering right now i think it's upset it's not getting to lower now it's saying lowering right there car wash mode manual shifting and all that so very easy system to use now the thing is i'm going to turn on the cameras 360 degree parking camera with multiple views yeah it is amazing the cameras seem to be updated as well and guess what i can actually pinch out like this to see a proper 360 degree view and the attention to detail is just amazing i am actually going to give an indicator to see oh my goodness that is absolutely crazy you can see that very impressive mercedes very impressive and i can even save this position so next time i come to this position automatically the camera will get activated that's next level attention to detail in fact when you turn on and off the vehicle it shows you the mercedes logo and shows these stars around it same is the case here as well on this screen what's new well they have got more views now so i can just browse through the same s class inspired ones which is phenomenal because it's so easy to use and this off road view is obviously amazing too the horn is nice and loud obviously this is a auto dimming mirror lot of controls here for the light so mercedes me connected car tech you get a mirror here you get a light same is the case here as well you get a mirror and you get a light you get a handle to hold on to right here too and uh, these are the controls for the cruise control and to navigate through this screen this is to navigate through that particular screen you got four ac vents here this is fake it's kind of unnecessary but now everyone is doing that kind of a design ac works really nicely engine start button stop start system this you can open it like that two usb c charging sockets 12 volt charging socket wireless charging pad and cup holders which can be cooled as well as heated i think <laughs> so that's also quite cool some nice features have been added for sure no denying that fact do you like this view i'm going to go through a lot of views when driving this car of course control for the headlights and uh, this is the drive mode selector which is the most unique and the best way to actually get into drive and reverse and parking and all mercedes does it the best way there is no two ways about it now obviously it has got a massive panoramic roof so that is the sun blind it's a bit slow to operate but yes it's a huge panoramic roof and because the interior is beige in terms of color it obviously brings in a lot of light and lot of airy feeling inside so okay now i'm trying to open the sunroof i wish there were more buttons to actually do it because using only one switch to do a lot of things now gets a bit cumbersome at times now we are going to be opening the massive sunroof let's see how much it opens i think it's going to open like this and then we can open it even further no no that's about it but yes it still brings in a lot of airy feeling that is the wind deflector of course so i was telling you it has got the air balance package how do i actually use it very simple first and foremost i actually press something with the air conditioning a blower speed and uh, maybe decrease the temperature when i do that i can just press this and get into the second settings here it has something known as second row of seats which i can use to control the air conditioning in the second row i can get into air quality turn on air freshener and it has a pm 2.5 air filter as well phenomenal the screens the quality and this wood finishing also is something which people will definitely like it obviously gets a 13 speaker bumaster surround sound system let's listen to some audio right anyway. away Oh, nice audio system. Let's start driving right away. 
All right, let's start driving. Before that, let me turn off the air conditioning quickly. We don't have to go through any drive modes today because there are none. No, I mean, there is, but there's no use of those drive modes. So straight away, I'm going to turn on the maps here. I'm actually going to turn off the traction control, but before that, I want to turn off ADAS because ADAS is so intrusive in this car. Active brake assist off. We can keep the blind spot assist on. And then I'm actually going to come into the info panel. Before that, let me actually get into the car setting and turn off the traction control as well. Not that it's going to make any difference. Heads up display on. I'm sure you guys will not be able to see it either. Here, turn on the info vehicle. Actually, we're going to get into the engine so you can see how much power and torque is being consumed into drive mode. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Hazard lights off and off we go. No launch control. Oh, 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 surprisingly quick for a car which weighs 2300 kgs. Yes, performance is actually very good for a car of this size. It's a heavy car, quite heavy, but the engine is very peppy and punchy. This is a 3 litre straight six petrol engine which produces 381 horsepower and 500 Newton meters of torque in the GLE 450. Both the 450s, the GLE as well as the GLE, sorry, the 450 and the 450D, both use a 3 litre engine. This is a straight six petrol motor which is extremely smooth and refined, very punchy, pulls nice and strong. So yes, acceleration is something which will obviously put a big smile on your face. And it's very refined and smooth, lower end of the rev range, very nice mid-range. And it screams in the top end, but the refinement levels and insulation is so good, you can't really have much of the motor on the inside. So it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 5.6 seconds, which is quick enough that the blind spot monitor is telling me don't turn right now. Yeah, that's quite quick. Even the diesel goes in 5.6 seconds only from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour and the top speed is 250 kilometers per hour, which this car is limited to. So yes, it is very, very, very fast indeed. It's always blinking and making sounds. So it doesn't have the full suite of ADAS functions because it does not have adaptive cruise control, but it has got active brake assist, forward collision warning, very intrusive. So it's better you shut it only. Yeah, brakes are good, but yes, the car is very heavy and it has this very smooth way of pulling hard and fast. Redline comes in around 6,500 RPM, I think around 6,000 RPM only, but it's shifting around under 6,000 RPM. So yeah, it's short shifting, I don't know why. It is a very smooth gearbox, which is not the quickest, but gets the job done. It's a nine speed unit. It's a torque converter, of course, but for a car of this weight, it is absolutely fast without a second thought. <laughs> now I can manually take control of the gearbox as well here using the parish shifters. I have downshifted and there now it is holding on to the gear at a higher level but still it will make a shift unless and until i get into this setting turn on manual shifting and let's see whether it holds on to a gear no it still does not it says m3 there not the one from bmw manual that is but still it will make a shift gearing seems to be tall quite tall actually now of course the diesel is the engine of choice because that offers better fuel efficiency this one will return somewhere between 5 to 8 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style the diesel which is the 450d it produces 367 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque that's a lot of torque plus this is obviously having the 48 volt mild hybrid system the integrated starter generator resulting in a boost of 20 horsepower and 200 newton meters it does not add to the overall output because it just gives the boost whenever the battery has the juice and occasionally not all the time but as i see it this car has a very nice driving position and obviously the interior feels very premium in terms of quality the feature addition is good but the price is on the higher side in terms of ride quality low speed ride obviously is not the best because that's how the germans always prefer to keep their cars a little on the stiffer side and that's the same case with this particular car especially with 20 inch wheels in the amg line not the best over bad roads or at lower speeds but as you increase the speed now it really becomes so much better high speed stability is fantastic and that's the reason it can go to 250 kilometers per hour if you find the road and the guts and the money to pay all those speeding fines very nice horn yeah impressive horn but over these expansion joints you can hear a bit of the road noise and the tire noise the tire is so big you will almost always hear it and i'm in third gear since such a long time right now you can hear it you can hear the gearbox just being in the same gear not shifting because i put that manual control right now but here we get into info panel i get into the vehicle settings and there you can see a lot of other things so this guy's got nine airbags which is the norm obviously euro ncap five star rated car and that's the 
thing you would expect from mercedes benz without a doubt okay let me just shift up now in terms of drive modes it has got three drive modes which is kind of pointless because there is the comfort mode which is for comfort makes the suspension more comfort oriented eco mode for better efficiency and then there is an off road mode for which i have to activate the off road program maximum speed 110 km per hour where is the sport mode there is no sport mode in this car there wasn't there earlier either so mercedes is like you know this is an suv but the s in the suv is missing in the drive modes <laughs> come on we need a sport mode here which means that none of these modes are going to make any alteration to the steering wheel and to the engine also i feel and it only does it to the suspension because it's got air suspension the base gle 300d which uses a 2 liter diesel engine does not get air suspension it's running on steel springs so overall ride is good at high speeds but in the city now the ride could have been better handling is good but again very neutral steering doesn't really offer much feel or feedback i mean it's a direct enough steering but doesn't really excited to drive hard and fast and obviously there is considerable body roll as well something you would expect considering the size of this car but as i see it i feel that the gle should have offered more features at a lesser price because the bmw x5 which is the main competitor of this car costs lesser money in fact if you opt for the petrol version of the x5 the top end which is the x drive 40i m sport compared to this one that is 10 lakh rupees cheaper so we'll just do the wiper test 10 lakh rupees cheaper that's a lot of money to save and the other rivals are obviously the audi q7 and the volvo xc90 now both these cars are also a seven seater so there's the advantage which they have there but this is a very good seller for mercedes benz and overall in the segment also it sells really well but personally i really like the x5 because i feel the x5 is a better overall package and then the m sport trim really excites and there is a sport mode in that car okay now it's time to do the brake test which means something is going to fly there hazard lights on and should we stand on the brakes we shall tire noise hmm okay let's quickly launch before that let me actually turn off the esp again because we changed modes and i turned on on its own get into the info mode let me turn on the cameras i don't know till by what speed they're going to last but yeah that is so cool let me actually change this mode because there's so many of them so we get into sport which looks really nice left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator no launch control hazard lights off and off we go this launches at 2100 rpm yes it is sprightly enough which actually brings me to the price of this car so there are three variants there's the GLE 300d which is the base variant which produces 269 horsepower and 550 newton meters which is going to be the most popular seller of course because most people who are going to buy this car are going to be sitting in the rear seat obviously that's the reason mercedes has not given a sport mode in this car that is steel spring so the ride quality isn't as impressive but then the price is impressive enough because that cost rupees 1.17 crores on road mode by then there is the GLE 450d the diesel which is priced at rupees 1.33 crores but this GLE 450 petrol is actually costing 4 lakhs more than the diesel in which world does the petrol cost more than the diesel absurd because i think the taxation and all is also higher on the diesel when compared to the petrol but that's the case with, with BMW the X5's diesel variant costs more than the petrol variant and the price difference between the X5's X Drive 30d M Sport and the Mercedes GLE 450d happens to be rupees 1 lakhs where the BMW is obviously cheaper making maneuvers like this is not a problem at all and you know i launched the car with the traction control off absolutely no effect in terms of wheel spinning and all because obviously fourmatic system power is i think more rear biased here but it doesn't spin the wheels at all so this car has a registration cost of almost rupees 16 lakhs and the first year insurance cost is rupees 4.62 lakhs which is obviously in line with whatever is there with other cars as well of this price range because taxation is a in our country but it is what it is if you don't want to pay taxes you can pay 9 lakhs more when compared to this car to get the EQE which is priced at rupees 1.46 crores on road mumbai so yeah the EQE seems more attractive in a few areas but this obviously feels better to drive because you get on the throttle it really feels like you're driving a car not driving a gadget which is the case with most electric cars these days not most all of them so you're going to come to a halt why is it wanting to recognize my voice for the car play i have no freaking idea the steering is actually light enough at lower speeds all right hazard lights off time to launch again we will change this mode quickly to the off road one because we can left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go
this is actually the fourth generation of the Mercedes GLE which was globally unveiled in 2018 in 2019 it was launched globally and in india it came in 2020 why was it late in india because india was the very first market where the long wheel base version of the GLE started to sell yeah for our market they actually developed the long wheel base version i believe or probably for china but who cares and who knows because this car actually offers you everything that an e class does with the added practicality of not really having to slow down over bad roads and over speed breakers so that's a big win but what is the history of this car it all started in the 1990s when mercedes was like yaar apni g wagon bahut purani ho gayi hai g wagon had done almost 11 years so this decided that we are going to get a replacement okay look at it go around the corners nice so they decided that we need to replace the g wagon which was known as the g class so they came up with the M class and uh, initially they were going to partner with Mitsubishi take the Pajero or the Montero's uh, platform and develop the car but that thing did not go through because of technical reasons they were like you know we cannot engineer it that way but they were going to partner with Mitsubishi imagine Mercedes Benz one of the biggest brands in the world wants to make an elect uh, sorry not an electric car wants to make I got a little distracted wanted to make an SUV and they went to Mitsubishi because the Pajero and the Montero are by far the best SUVs of all times because the Land Rovers and the Range Rovers and obviously all these cars are very capable but not as reliable as a Mitsubishi but then we have the Toyota Land Cruiser as well which is also a very reliable car so is the Lexus LX but those are absurdly priced not for the mass mass market of obviously so then they decided okay let's make it our own and in 96 they actually showcased the car 95 they did crash test and all to get the car ready for production in 97 they launched it it was on sale in 2004 then the second generation model came i think 2005 something with the second generation model now they went from body on frame to unibody because that is the same time when the first generation GL also came in a seven seater version of the ML why was it ML didn't i say M class yes it was only originally known as the M class and then they obviously put it as you know M 320 and all that that was the naming mercedes had earlier remember the s320 the s350 it's still the same so then uh, bmw obviously did an objection he's like they're like you know this is not cool how can you name your cars m320 we are going to have an m340 i one day so don't do that so then mercedes changed it and made it ml from m to ml and in 2015 they realized you know we messed up again so let's change the name yet again so they changed the name from ml to gl and they added e for E class of SUVs, C for C class of SUVs, and S for S class of SUVs. So that naming happened, and this is the same dilemma Mercedes is going to go through again with the EQ series because again they're messed up there. They are clueless of what they're doing with the EQ series because the EQ name cannot stick around longer. So rather than just calling it EQS, they should have called it S class electric. Probably that would have a better impact considering the iconic stature of the Mercedes S class. It's absolutely insane the way the S class has dominated since donkey's years. So yeah, four generations of this car, and uh, first generation was body and frame. Then it came into the Uni body platform, and it is not very uh, what do I say attractive a car. It's more practical a car, and that's something which people look for in the Indian market. And that's the reason this is actually one of the top sellers for Mercedes Benz, without a doubt. Okay, then what happened was that Mercedes Benz also started launching a coupe version of this car, a performance-oriented version with the AMG and whatnot. Oh my God, very nice car. Only thing is, what I have noticed when you drive this car extensively, na, it is prone to rattling, and that's something which you don't expect from Mercedes Benz car. Now that's something that could have been a little bit better. We're going to come to a halt here and launch it one last time today. Okay, let's get out of this menu and let's quickly get into the off-road mode here. I don't know till what speed it's going to work. Yeah, it does work for up to 15 kilometers per hour with the transparent bonnet. Let's get out of this particular view. I wish this was just better. It's not that intuitive to use. I like the classic dials the most, but yeah, they have stuffed in a lot, but it's not all that impressive either. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off and. that is really brisk performance yeah this car pulls nice and strong for what is a heavy vehicle not that heavy but yeah it is a heavy car so as i see it the gle has got pricier for no reason but that's the case with most cars these days they are just becoming too expensive somehow making electric cars now looking not that expensive because now the price difference between the gle and its electric equivalent the eqe isn't all that much if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon Bye.